I'm saying? Like, if a person does that to you, I'm saying you were never hot. I don't even care about this song. I think Dirty Money is forever Dirty Money. But what other major stars are going down with him? I got this show, and I just really wanted to be last train to Paris. What you think? The world of Hollywood, known for its glamour and power, has always harbored a darker side. Now, a powerful lawyer is stepping forward to expose a list of celebrities who allegedly attempted to silence victims. Recent controversies surrounding Diddy have illuminated some of the industry's more troubling practices. New revelations indicate that he may not be the only one engaged in behind-the-scenes power plays and influence tactics aimed at keeping dissenting voices quiet. This unfolding story promises to disrupt the entertainment world for years to come, as several prominent figures face accusations of using their influence to stifle potential whistleblowers. Diddy's legal challenges have underscored how money, fame, and power can manipulate situations and control narratives. Even more alarming is the implication that other high-profile individuals might be complicit in similar efforts to conceal the truth and safeguard their reputations. Yo, Wendy Williams is trending, y'all, because people are missing her now more than ever. You want to take a guess why? Because of Diddy's arrest. <laughs> That's all they want. <laughs> so with Diddy's arrest shaking the internet up, fans are wondering where her hot takes are. Everyone remembers how she predicted Diddy's downfall. And now they're wishing she could spill the tea on this wild situation. Y'all remember when y'all didn't believe me? One of the most controversial moments in Diddy's career occurred during his reality show Making the Band, where his ruthless management style was on full display. In a notorious episode, he fired nearly the entire cast, leaving only Don Richard. This decision raised significant concerns, especially after Freddie P alleged that Diddy had removed Don from songs after she rejected his advances. These claims suggest a troubling pattern of behavior, indicating that Diddy may have used his power to manipulate or retaliate against artists who did not comply with his demands. So I've given a lot of thought, and I'm gonna let you out your contract too. As far as for you, Dawn, I still wanna make music with you. I still want you to be signed to the label. claiming that he'll remove her from songs and turn off her mic when she performed it, when she'll turn down his advances. That's some little teenage voice control. He used to control and everything. He used to reject. I believe him. That's like, I don't even care if you, you was never on a song because you was hot. You get what I'm saying? Not her. I'm saying like, if a person does that to you, I'm saying you were never hot. I don't even care about this song. I have an agenda. I'll make you feel like you're important. I'll make you, I'll even give you a fake press run. I'll send you on a fake promotional tour. Them just relationships. Make you feel like you got it. Look at Cassie, he's strung her strings for years. That's why this girl really thought she was a singer all this time. I thought she was a singer until I started seeing them dating and shit. I'm like, oh, this shit real? But the whole time when I we was around, she was an artist. She was an artist. Um, she probably was on the sneaking, sneaking level, but she was an artist. Look how quickly that fades. What we remember Cassie for now? It ain't for artistry. Look how quickly that fades. What we remember Don for? Uh, Don. It ain't. It ain't. He didn't care about. His, he didn't care about what you said on that song. I ain't gonna say your talent because your talent will got you to him. But when he giving you something, it's not for. Him. He, he give a fake care. He give a fake care because he got a motive. Once the motive, he on to the next. And I, I, I believe Diddy just ride off accomplish, accomplishments, like being able to get the next one, you know, being able to break the one that said they wouldn't break, getting a hard thug from prison and turning him out. Or... Diddy's legal troubles have taken center stage in this ongoing conversation as more individuals come forward with allegations of his attempts to control narratives and suppress damaging stories. Recently, Gene Deal disclosed that Diddy allegedly used private, compromising tapes of Stevie J to manipulate situations. He claimed that Diddy leveraged personal materials to influence people's actions, prompting further discussions about what other secrets might be concealed behind closed doors. Also, he also alleges that Diddy forced him to watch a video of Stevie J having sex with a man. 
Who, little Stevie? Huh? <laughs> Who, Stevie? <laughs> what Josh needs to call him, Stevie? <laughs> Yo, I read that, man. Um, I don't know if you know this, but then maybe they have a tape that we don't, we could, we didn't see, cause the pictures was a little vague. There was an exotic worker came out and said that was him and not Stevie J. But in order for them to put that in there, they must have clearly thought it was Stevie J or think it's Stevie J. But you got to get this art. Check this out. He knew that this kid admired Stevie J and loved the work Stevie J had done in the industry in the past. This kid looked up to Stevie J. Now, what if Puff told him that that was Stevie J in the tape? And the kid, the guy looked like Stevie J. He did facial, uh, they, his face, he did facial, his face was fixed like he was doing some of the faces Stevie J be making. You understand? So now, the kid could have been drunk, kid could have been high. He was like, yo, Puff could have been like, yo, you talking about, this is somebody you admire? Look what he doing. This Stevie J right here. Now, in that kid's mind, he may have thought that was Stevie J, or he think that's Stevie J. If Puff told him that was Stevie J, it was Stevie J. So people can't say, oh, he lying and everything like that, because we really don't know what was said. Even more surprising was the feud between Stevie J and 50 Cent, where Stevie J defended Diddy while criticizing 50 Cent for mocking the hip-hop mogul. This altercation offered fans a glimpse into the intricate dynamics of celebrity relationships, revealing how loyalty often intertwines with secrecy. Amid Diddy's controversy, Wendy Williams has also resurfaced in conversations. The talk show host had a famously awkward exchange with Diddy years ago, and in light of the recent allegations, that old clip has taken on new significance. While Wendy's interaction with Diddy raised eyebrows at the time, many are now questioning whether she knew more about his behind-the-scenes behavior than she let on of a now 16-year-old. Mm -hmm. Who I met backstage, who is, is, is He did? He's a great, great young oh, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you represent a lot. Diddy facing serious allegations, Wendy Williams' absence from the public eye has become even more noticeable. Some speculate that her silence may be connected to the ongoing legal battles, suggesting she is remaining quiet to avoid getting further entangled in this situation. Megyn Kelly also brought attention to the strange exchange between Wendy and Diddy, reminding viewers that Wendy has a history of calling out controversial figures. Her current silence is raising eyebrows and prompting questions. People like Wendy Williams coming out, um, making comments about him. I guess that there's a history there. I didn't know that Wendy Williams had been um, pushed out of her radio job uh, many years ago after she suggested that Diddy was gay. There was an incident between them from a 2017 appearance he made on her show that people are circulating now saying this is very awkward. He's bringing up her, I think at the time, 16-year-old son. As the mother of a now 16-year-old. Mm -hmm. Who I met backstage. Who's, is, he did? He's a great, great young oh, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you represent a lot. It is stunning how many people knew about him and these lesser known figures who actually were sounding the alarm on him only to be totally ignored. Most chilling tactics employed by powerful figures to control narratives is silencing potential critics. Jaguar Wright has been outspoken about how Diddy and other elites used their influence to prevent damaging stories from coming to light. She asserts that those who dared to speak out were often blacklisted, threatened, or bribed to ensure their silence. And you heard me say, that Sean Combs was a trafficker, and you said I was a liar because I was jealous, because I wasn't his girlfriend, because I wasn't successful in the music industry. You said all of these things about me because I told the truth. I said what I said, the facts are the facts, the evidence is the evidence. It is clear now there are victims. It is clear now there are perpetrators. Why don't you stop worrying about trying to make me a liar? Ask the FBI to produce every video seized at Diddy Properties, who are protecting a corrupt DA that I have footage of, locked away on camera at a Clinton fundraiser, minimizing a 14-year-old girl who is friends with the Clintons, who are friends with the Obamas, who are friends. 
Additionally, Jean Deal, Diddy's former bodyguard, recently spoke out, claiming that several celebrities have influenced Diddy's actions over the years. According to Deal, the high-profile individuals who attended Diddy's parties may have known more than they revealed, suggesting a culture of secrecy that goes beyond just one person. His statements imply a coordinated effort among these figures to protect one another and keep troubling details from coming to light. He was on the platform and you said that he was going to get arrested in September. Yeah, man. Uh, anybody who in law enforcement or people know the law, when Homeland Security ran up into his house, uh, people will tell you or people knew there was just a matter of time that they was going to indict him and bring him in uh, to see the judge, bro. It was just a matter of time. Uh, I just figured out with the grand jury and their different sessions and stuff like that, and then what uh, one of the uh, witnesses told me, I just figured it out that it was going to be around September that they were going to bring them in, bro. Um, this is, it's, people might not understand. It's difficult when you see a brother that has so much promise become an icon as far as in the music business and stuff that he did uh, to turn around and, uh, just tear his whole life down, but it's all because of his mentors and the people that trained him and taught him the music business. You know, it's all about the people who trained and taught him the music business because Puff wasn't, um, uh, uh, he wasn't born a monster. You know what I'm saying? He was made into a monster, brother. Do you understand what I'm saying? He was made into a monster from the stuff that happened to him the things that he had to do, you understand? The things that he had to do to become who he is. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's like this, brother. You never like something so much that you can't do without, and you never be willing to do anything to get where you want to be at. You got to have principles, you got to have morals, you got to keep with that stuff. And in that music business, a lot of that stuff get thrown out the window. You understand? And that's what happened to him. He started doing the things to other people that was done to him. To keep it frank, he was doing the things to other people that was done to him. And it is what it is. You got to know better. And if you know better, you will do better. Then he started doing things to people, you understand, that he learned. That's a learned behavior, bro. And I'm not saying that he may have been doing a couple of things here and there with women, stuff like that in New York, but the things that they're talking about that he was doing, bringing in prostitutes to have sex with his girl and all that stuff like that, that was some crazy stuff to me, man. So I'm just looking at this whole thing, man, and um, you have asked me, and, and we don't have these conversations like most people do. We gonna go back and you gonna tell me what, uh, uh, we gonna talk about this. You said, I'm gonna ask you how you feel, bro. I don't wanna, I don't want no man to ever go to jail and be leaving their kids behind, be leaving their family behind. You understand? But some dudes belong in jail based on what they do and how they do it. We know that to be true. And it's just this situation, man, um, when they get down to all the facts and all what happened, he may belong in jail, bro. And that's not my doing. That's not Cassie doing. That's his doing and his learned behavior from the people that mentored him. The story takes on even greater complexity when considering the behind the scenes dynamics. Reports indicate that Mark Curry and other industry insiders have witnessed disturbing activities at private parties, prompting them to distance themselves from certain events. Curry described some gatherings as having a dark energy where a list celebrities engaged in questionable behaviors without any fear of repercussions. Food, or if I'm going to take a flight and I need some underwear from my house, I have a certain kind of man that goes to my house and get the underwear. If I just want to get my car washed, I have a certain kind of man that goes and does it. And it was almost like the, these certain kind of men were like uh, being used as, um, they just do boys. People who always will do whatever he would ask them to do. So I seen a lot of that. Um, I seen a whole bunch of, uh, uh, of things that that you would question a lot of questionable people 
um, people with reputations that are known for, um, and I, I don't like to discriminate on no one's sexual preference because I can't say that just because someone has a different lifestyle than mine that, that they're wrong. And I have to say, you know, that's just what that person, you know, that's how they choose to live. And that doesn't affect how I'm living. So I don't tend to get involved in a lot of that stuff, but you, you do see it a lot in the industry. And you can start off with um, the fact that everyone likes to, to date the same female. It's like, it's like, okay, um, how do you feel having sex with my girlfriend and then still being my friend? Or did we not, it's almost like we both just had sex with her without being, you know, it's just a whole bunch of nastiness that goes on. As far as him being with men, um, that's a rumor that I've heard. And it's also, um, I, from with my own eyes, I never saw him uh, in the act of being with a man, but I saw some questionable men in a room. And I saw a lot of smiling and giggling and all of that kind of stuff as far as what they did after the drinks and all of that going out I don't know nothing about it I went into a few parties where I walked in and I saw some celebrities sitting on uh Clive Davis lap type stuff you know but when I looked and I was like wow I see what's going on maybe this ain't the room that I'm supposed to be in moreover the recent raid in Miami where Diddy's property was searched has fueled even more rumors According to Stevie J, this event signals that authorities are increasingly scrutinizing Diddy's activities, suggesting it's only a matter of time before more revelations emerge. He also hinted that many in Hollywood are feeling anxious about what might be exposed next. I don't know what my, whatever someone does in their bedroom, that's what they do. I don't got nothing to do with that. I'm just here to say that I've never seen my man doing anything foul like they talking about. None of it. All of it. I, I mean, you know. I, I've never seen it. I've known him for 29 years. And then it's like with guys like like 50, you know what I'm saying? Like Uncle Tom cats like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you now you want to put me, I don't know if y'all saw the post where 50 posted about me, of course you guys. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, 50 um, has been going after Diddy and everybody associated with him for months now, ever since the Cassie lawsuit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you can't brush under the rug. I, I don't see anybody um, um, reporting about what um, tatted up Holly said about him beating her up and about, you know what I'm saying, his other baby mom said beating her up. I just look at it as, you know, he wants to bring the black community down worse than anyone else. How How is that so? I said what I said on my post and I'm standing on that too. Now, since he didn't accept what my offer to him, and he want to continue to be a comedian, why don't you go make some movies with Michael Blast and don't talk about it? Okay. If you don't want to fight, if you don't want to donate to charity, donate the bread to charity and fight, don't, don't stop being a girl and talking about dudes. I find it funny that, you know, when they first cru try to crucify somebody, they go through the media first and they're just flooded with lies and propaganda. I'm not concerned about this n Curtis. I mean, this dude Curtis. You know what I'm saying? He's Uncle Tom and that's just what it is. So I'm gonna speak on a thousand percent of what I know to be true about my guy. My spirits are up. He's spending time with his children and his mother. You know what I'm saying? I'm working out. You know, he's, he's doing very well. I've known this guy for 29 years. See, I'm not just a guy off the internet trolling. I'm a first-hand witness. Stevie, it's my understanding that when the raid went down in Miami, you were were you on Star Island or were you actually at Diddy's house? I know you were in Miami. I was, I was, uh, I was at his crib working in the studio. I was sitting outside the studio door and I heard a big boom. Now, mind you, before we get into this, I'm, I'm, I'm not a spring chicken, even though I look fly. And stuff. But I've witnessed some historical events of, of excessive force, but none like this since um, Saddam Hussein or El Chapo, or Pablo Escobar, even. even Osama bin Laden. I heard a big boom. So I'm thinking like, you know, a lot of people do work on the island all day long, so I'm figuring someone drops some material. The entertainment industry relies heavily on loyalty, but cracks are beginning to surface. Insiders suggest that several other celebrities are deeply enmeshed in this web of secrecy. 
While Diddy's name is currently at the forefront, other listers are suspected of leveraging their connections to silence critics, buy off allegations, or dismiss potential scandals before they escalate. Names like Stevie J, Wendy Williams, and Mark Curry keep resurfacing in discussions. Yet the biggest question remains who else is hiding behind the scenes, and how extensive is this network of protection? If more insiders come forward with concrete evidence, it could trigger a reckoning in Hollywood, revealing stories that have been buried for years. Only time will tell if the truth will finally emerge, or if these powerful figures will succeed in keeping the dark details concealed once again.